Throughout history, there have been a number of presidents of the United States who were assassinated. The most famous is John F. Kennedy. However, in 1901, the president, William McKinley, was shot dead by a man who was regarded as an anarchist. Leon Sholgosh, armed with his revolver, approached McKinley and fired into the president twice at point-blank range. The initial wounds were not lethal, but the president, William McKinley, would die from his wounds eight days later. But what is the story of the shocking attack that resulted in the death of the president, and also the quite literally shocking execution of the assassin? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Leon Sholgosz was born in Detroit, and he was born into a Polish-American family. When he was 10, his mother died, and as a teenager he worked in a glass factory, and then in a rolling steel mill. But following the economic crash of 1893, the workers went on strike, and Sholgosz joined a socialist group, and he then turned to more radical socialist political groups, and he became an anarchist. He saw many strikes in 1898, which ended in violence, but he then went to live with his father, who brought a huge 50-acre farm in Ohio. He didn't help too much with the running of the farm, and came into conflict with his stepmother, and he was said to have never had any relationships, be it friendship or romantic, with anyone, and he was a recluse. He heard a speech by a prominent anarchist named Emma Goldman, and he attended her lecture, and continued to read more anarchist literature. He met with other anarchists, however a radical newspaper at some point issued a warning about him. It read, Attention, the attention of comrades is called to another spy. He is well dressed of medium height, rather narrow shoulders, blonde and about 25 years of age. Up to the present, he has made appearances in Chicago and Cleveland. In the former place he remained but a short time, whilst in Cleveland he disappeared when the comrades had confirmed themselves of his identity and were on the point of exposing him. His demeanour is of the usual sorts, pretending to be greatly interested in the cause, asking for names or soliciting aid for acts of contemplated violence. If the same individual makes his appearance elsewhere, the comrades are warned in advance and can act accordingly. Sholgosh thought there was injustice in society, and he believed the rich were exploiting the poor, and he blamed the government for this. He, however, had learned that the King of Italy, Umberto I, had been shot dead by an anarchist, and this man did this as he wanted to help the common man, but then Leon Sholgosh became more dissident and more radical. On the 31st of August 1901, Leon travelled to Buffalo, New York, and this was the site of the Pan American Exposition, and here President William McKinley would be doing a speech. He rented a room nearby, but on the 6th of September he went to the exposition armed with a concealed Ivor Johnson safety automatic revolver. He had brought this four days earlier. William McKinley was the 25th President of the United States and had served since 1897, and he was the last President to have served in the American Civil War, and was considered a skilled military man. His presidency was marked by a period of rapid economic growth, but throughout the afternoon of the 6th of September 1901, crowds gathered in the galleries of the halls to see the president. William McKinley arrived on time, and the pipe organ played the star-spangled banner, as McKinley ordered the doors to be opened to allow the people to greet him. The police let people in, and McKinley would start to shake hands with dozens of people every minute. Citizens came forward to shake his hand, but at 4.07pm, Leon Sholgosh reached the front of the line to meet the president. President McKinley reached out his hand, and then the assassin slapped it to the side, and pulled out his gun and fired twice into the president at point-blank range, in the abdomen. Onlookers were shocked, and a third shot was prepared, however Sholgosh was then wrestled to the ground, and the gun was taken off him. He then claimed, I'd done my duty, as men beat him with rifle butts, but McKinley staggered backwards, and was prevented from falling. The president wanted to show he was not seriously injured, but blood was visible, but seeing the beating of his assassin, McKinley ordered it to be stopped, and Sholgosh was then dragged away. McKinley then asked for his wife, and he was then carried out on a stretcher and placed in an ambulance. One of the bullets had deflected off a button and had only grazed him, but the other had penetrated his abdomen. The ambulance reached the hospital, and he was then brought to an operating theatre to try and remove the remaining bullet. The president was given morphine and strychnine to ease the pain, and the wound was sewn up. However, the surgeons could not find the bullet, and they believed it had lodged itself in the president's back muscles. Initially, it looked like the president was recovering well, 
However, eight days after the shooting, he would succumb to an infection caused by the bullet and the wound. Following his death, the new president, Theodore Roosevelt, stated, When compared with the suppression of anarchy, every other question sinks into insignificance. However, in the days before, Shogosh had been taken to prison and was held, before he was then brought before a county judge. On the 16th of September, he was indicted on account of first-degree murder, and he often spoke freely with his guards, but he refused to speak to his appointed attorney, who would help him defend himself and he refused to talk to psychiatrists who would test his sanity. Some of the jury believed he was insane, but they voted to convict him quickly, following deliberations which were over very soon. With this, he was sentenced to death. Shogosh was then visited twice the night before his execution. One visit was from two clergymen, and another was from his brother and brother-in-law. He refused to speak with the priests, but they asked him for 45 minutes to repent his sins, and he refused but his brothers, when they visited him, asked who had helped him and convinced him to shoot the president. They believed it was unlike him and said this was not how he was raised, but it was clear Leon had been turned to become a violent terrorist. His father wrote a letter to him the night of his execution and wished him luck and said he could not help him any more and that he had to pay for his actions of killing the president. But Leon Sholgosh was sentenced to death to die via the electric chair. He was taken from his cell in Auburn Prison in New York to the execution chamber. The state electrician or executioner was Edwin Davis, and he was awaiting Leon inside the chamber as the guards brought him in and confirmed his identity. Following this, he was sat down on the chair and was strapped to it before the cap was placed on his head. His final words were, I killed the president because he was the enemy of the good people, the good working people. I'm not sorry for my crime. I'm sorry I could not see my father. As the execution was prepared, final checks occurred, and then Leon Shogosh was hit with three jolts of 1800 volt electricity, and was pronounced dead at 7.14am, 45 days after the death of the president. His brother and brother-in-law attended the execution, and they asked to take his body away for proper burial, but this was rejected as they were worried crowds would string up his remains. But Shogosh was autopsied, and following this his body was buried on the grounds of the prison. The guards had initially planned to inter his body with quicklime to quicken the decomposition, but this was decided against. However, they poured sulfuric acid in the coffin of the president killer to disfigure his body, and it was said that within 12 hours the body would have disintegrated, and all his possessions were then burned. Leon Sholgosh has gone down in history as a man who in cold blood took the life of the president. He was a man who, if the crowd would have got hold of him, he would have been beaten to death. However, the president, who was wounded, intervened to stop this, and he must have believed that justice would have prevailed. But despite this, William McKinley would die eight days later, from an infection, but his assassin would go to his death inside the execution chamber, after he was strapped to the electric chair. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.